drive and, and my laptop's off to the side. So just bear with me before I get into the main bulk of this uh, little quick webinar I'm doing on foundation and certainly preparation for hill work and give you a little bit of information uh, and a little bit of a heads up about um, some exciting stuff I've got going on. So just bear with me. I'm just going to check my laptop. Let's just make sure that's okay. So hopefully a couple of people would be joining me. Um, very quickly, um, I'm going to do this very quick live just to tell you a little bit about um, the launch that I've got going on. I'm in the middle of re this week. Uh, I'm going to be doing several lives, telling you a little bit about my online training and um, my a little bit of an exclusive um, offer that I have for anybody that joins this week. Um, you're going to get a little bit of a, a surprise bonus um, and a, a certain, as I say, for to help you guys out in this time. Um, a very limited offer, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about that at the end of this little quick um, presentation, okay? So I wanted to just very quickly do this live. I posted some um, pictures of my dogs doing heel work on Instagram, and one, there's a couple of common questions that I get asked um, whenever I put anything to do with heel work or, or any training, and they always tend to be around a similar theme. One is how do you start um, heel work training off, which I'm going to show you with a couple of my dogs. And um, the other thing is, which, how do you start any training? How do you actually get um, your dog's training going for sports, um, going from the get-go with a tiny puppy? So some of you may have seen that over the last couple of weeks, I posted some videos of my two puppies, Jungle and Hottie, um, and starting out their, their training, and where I put my emphasis at this stage. Um, so really it's about building blocks, and it's starting from the ground up, and laying a really, really solid foundation. Just have a slurp of coffee. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but I have really bad hay fever and um, it makes my, <coughs> my throat a little bit dry, so bear with me. So it's all about, dog training is all about building blocks and starting with a really, really, really solid foundation from the base, um, of which everything is built on. And it doesn't really matter what sport you train. So, for example, I teach people that do obedience, agility people, um, IGP handlers, um, world championship level competitors. Uh, heel Watch Your Music, Rally, a real broad spectrum field trial people um, I've trained and have been involved with in their training and it's always about laying a solid foundation. Um, and the more foundation skills that your dog has, the easier, the ironic thing is the easier that your training journey um, becomes. In regards to heel work, there's some real core skills that will help you when you lay your foundation, if you incorporate them, it makes heel work training that bit easier. All right, so I'm going to go over those really, really quickly. What was my pen? Okay. The first thing to consider when you're training dogs is to create, number one, is focus and engagement, okay? Now, that means um, attention, okay, and building reinforcements. Oh, explain this one a bit rough, rough. Right. So, when all I, a slash building reinforcements and also identifying reinforcements, I should say. So, every dog is going to come, sorry, let me just type right that first. Every dog is going to come with a slightly different variation in what the things that it loves, it likes, it really enjoys. And it's down to us as trainers or owners or handlers to identify which one's applicable to that specific dog. So Jungle and Hottie are already developing different things that they uh, prefer. Gosh, I'm sweating terrible. It's really hot here. Let me just open the door. Bear with me. <coughs> so, um, sorry. <laughs> um, so, it's really important that as a trainer we identify the things that our dogs love, they like, and they absolutely are going to go head over heels for. Um, and we can manipulate those things. And some of those things are going to be easy for us to use, like toys and food, etc. Some of the things are going to be a little bit more um, challenging. So, for example, if your dog really likes to chase things, that's harder to manipulate to use at your own end. But, however, we can incorporate games which utilise chase um, to build value for us into the things that we want, i.e. toys and food. Okay? So, focusing engagement is the big one initially. Second thing that I want to start to work on with my dogs is body awareness, okay? And these two things, okay, are going to massively, massively help my dog when it comes to heel work training, and that's what we're going to look at um, with my dog shortly. So body awareness would include um, core strength, balance, and uh, proprioception. 
not even attempt to spell that. Okay, da -da 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 -da. Um, proprioception, when your dog understands how, you know, how to manoeuvre spaces and how to uh, be aware of what's around it. Um, I'm going to not even attempt to, <laughs> to put that one because I'm going to spell it hideously wrong and I'm going to look really, really stupid. So uh, I'm going to avoid spelling, but you get the idea of proprioception. All those three things are going to massively help my dog when it comes to heel work. So my dog is going to have more understanding of its four um, quarters or the four parts of its body and also how to move sideways, how to hold its body in a certain manner, etc, etc. Now within that also, I'm going to teach a couple of skills, okay? One is a hand touch, okay? And the other one is the dog to be able to stand four square, okay? Now those things might sound very simple. Okay, but they're going, to under, they're going to underpin all of your heel work training and all of your sports training. Whether it's an agility dog, an obedience dog, a work control dog, it doesn't really matter. These things are going to help you um, throughout your whole dog's career. Um, so, let's move on. So, hopefully everybody's got those. So, when it comes to heel work training, okay, specifically, what we're looking for is our dog to work with a level of engagement and focus and energy and drive within that. Um, and those things need to be built from the dog having value for that, that initial behaviour, which will be a hand touch. So, there's many ways in which you can teach a hand touch, okay? Uh, but my two preferential options of training a hand touch, one is the dog to do what I call the Morse code effect, and that's where the dog will... Morse code where the dog will uh, initially tap once, okay, um, and I click that. So the dog will tap my hand, and I will click the dog and reward the dog. What I then do is I withhold the click, and I get the dog to repeatedly tap. Again, I'm going to show you those that um, with my two puppies. I'm going to show you different versions um, where they tap, and they um, once I've got the dog tapping once, I withhold the click, and the dog will repeatedly tap. Then I uh, look to shape the dog to sustain the... Um, the contact on the hand, that's one bit version. The other version of which I can teach a hand touch is a lured method, okay? Lured method. Where I hold the treat. Pen is dying, let's change pen. Where I hold the treat in my hand, very specifically, and I click the dog for making contact, and then I fade the treat out of the hand. That, both methods have pros and cons, um, and it's really identifying the one that you're most comfortable with and the one that you find works best for your dog. And there's many, again, many dogs, many options of how to adapt those principles to get what you want. The things I'm looking for is it should be a duration hand touch, okay? Um, and I want the dog to be able to, for this behaviour to be proofed. So the dog will sustain that hand touch irrespective of what I'm doing, and also the dog doing it with movement, okay, and I want the dog to do it with a level of energy, okay, so the dog can do my hand, complete a hand touch, sustain that hand touch, and that does it with a level of ferocity and energy, so I want the dog to drive into that position, now depending on the dog, would, would also dictate what I then did with it, whether I would use it um, to create more upward um, momentum and get the dog driving up, whether I want the dog to stretch out, and so forth and so forth. So I'm going to run you through those skills with um, my puppy shortly um, and show you how to create a hand touch and the things that you can do with it. Hand touches are great for loads and loads of reasons. People teach it now readily for, for various skills, for nose work, for agility, for article indication, for, um, for positioning their dog, for veterinary exams, loads and loads of skills. So it's a really good skill to teach. I use it specifically for heel work to build duration, to build um, my dog's ability to sustain a position whilst there's distractions. I can introduce stewarding and I can introduce people moving around my dog, etc, etc, before my dog has the, the skill set to do heel work on the leg, all right? So we're going to go over hand touches with my dogs and the other skill that we're going to look at, as I mentioned, is the importance of the dog standing square and in balance, okay? So, full square. Now this is almost like I want my dog to um, act like a little show dog, to stand and end on it with their feet balanced, totally um, uh, in line with each other. And I want the dog to be able to do that in any position. In front of me, side, uh, in front of me, coming towards me, 
in front of me going that way or this way, depending on the sport I do, but it's good to have a, the dog understand it, it irrespective of where I am. And I'm looking for the dog to also to be able to move, okay, so four square and any position. And I want to do it from movement. Okay, and the reason that you want to teach that is that that's a precursor to your dog being able to set off properly and to be able to manoeuvre for turns um, and to be able to find here what position it initially. So there's loads of things that um, we can do with it. So preparing for turns. Okay. Um, and it's also, it's, uh, the dog's shoot, sorry, is also um, correct when it, it's technically correct. So if the dog is able to stand square in front of me and therefore by my side, the dog's going to be technically correct. I can also um, work on my dog being able to um, do it from um, a sit to a stand, okay? And that's where the dog will go forward into it. So that's another skill that my dog needs to develop. So it can go from sitting to standing, which is the first step of which I, uh, when I move off in the heel work position. I also want my dog to be able to sustain this again when it's been proof. So the dog should be able to remain in that position and also move laterally, uh, forward, turn on the spot, etc., and find um, that being four square. So we're going to do a little bit of work on that as well. So you'll see how these things will then underpin heel work position. And also it's a great way to build in physical strength for my dog. So I'm going to show you how that gets laid into their training. Um, so a couple of little things there just to get you thinking about heel work training. Um, and foundation training for any dog sport. If there is any questions at this point, just stick them on the thread and I'll have a look at them quickly. So, no questions at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, change with the camera where the um, camera's gonna be. I'm gonna get my puppy and I'm gonna get Jungle in and show you some of these skills with her um, that she's got and she's learning. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit with Hottie how she's beginning to understand those. I might actually do her first so that you can see the progression, all right? So bear with me, I'll be along shortly again. If you have any questions, just post them in the thread and I will pick them up. All right, so for now, for me, I'll see you in a second. Okay, hi everybody. Oh, I've got um, Hottie with me. Good girl. Um, and we're gonna just do a little demo on teaching your puppy to stand squarely, hopefully in preparation to having them do that by your side, which is a precursor to heel work. Even if you don't do obedience, it's a really good thing to teach your dog even from a, um, a, a core strength, um, body awareness skill, but also to assess um, for injuries if your dog, if you have a baseline of which your dog can stand square, you can see if the dog is starting to have a bias to one side, so it's a great way to keep um, a monitor of your dog's overall well-being. So um, certainly for her, she's growing at the moment, so her body's a bit out of sync, so you'll see that when you, probably when, we, um, uh, when she stands. I'll, um, you probably see that her arms a bit high, etc. Flip up. So I'm just gonna flip up. So first thing we're gonna do is engage her. So she's now not actually on, so she can do whatever she likes. But I'll switch her on, and then we'll start some training. So in my um, up on the side, I have some really nice treats, and I have some of her her meal, um, which has been allocated in the morning, which is a really good thing to do with your dogs. Allocate their their food in the morning and use it to train them throughout. Good girl. Um, obviously it's really hot here, so I'm mindful of that for the baby, not to ask too much of them. I haven't switched her on, so um, <coughs> she can pot around. So I precursor good girl. Um, to my dog's... Uh, oh, that's your food, isn't it? Good girl. Good girl. Um, a precursor to them understanding to reliably switch her on and off is a really important part of focus and engagement. Um, so long term, if my dogs compete in dog sports, ideally what I'm looking for is them to be <coughs> like she is nonchalantly mooching around, and then when I ask them to, just switch on. So I'm gonna do that first, and then I'm gonna show you um, some little skills with her, just about teaching her the foot. But nothing complicated, really, really simple. I'm gonna use these two foot pull bones, and then I'll use the two blue blocks that you see in the background. Um, so. Ready, steady. Yep. So you can see there, she animates herself. Uh, get the tucker. When she, oh yes. When she um, hears those magic words. Oh, oh, oh. I've just got to be a little bit mindful of her teeth. So if you watch when I play, I tend to be very gentle with my tugging and let her just go. Like, Aha, yes, good girl. Having her bring it back. So we're going to switch to food, which again, that's another foundation skill. Being able to, skill to be able to switch between food and toys. Thank you. 
Good girl. Well done. I'm going to use my food. Good girlie. It just sounds a bit uncomfortable in my mouth, isn't it? You right? Whoa, she says, normally again, so she's, she's teething at the moment, so she's struggling to eat um, certain foods, just because it's a bit, her mouth's a bit sore. So we'll stick with her, um, her meal. So what I'm going to shape is her to stand on the knees and put her front and back feet on them really simply. As you can see, she has a history of doing that already. Um, so if your puppies, you're starting out, you don't have to use wobbly cushions. You can use anything that you have in your house. Um, two normal cushions off your sofa, um, solid boxes, platforms, anything like that are great to start this off. And what I'm looking for is her to put her front feet on one coloured um, cushion and her back feet on another. So we're going to give that a go. Let me just get organised with your food. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I've got a meal here, so she should. I'm going to just make sure they're square. And I'm not too far apart at this stage. Well, they're there. Good. At this, so she's just come off there. I'm going to just wait her out and see if she figures out to... <laughs> Good girl. Got her back feet on. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, get get that go. Little bit there. So she's got her front and back feet on. Good girl. And I'm just going to feed her in that position. I'm using a spoon. Another little really good skill to teach your puppies. Oh, hang on. Good girl. Is to eat off a metal spoon. It just helps if you have to. Okay. If you have to, have to pick up metal articles later on. Really simple way to get them comfortable picking up metal in their mouth. So I'm going to wait her out. See if she offers this a bit. Let's pick up that. That's better. Do that one. Okay. Let's wait her out. Yay. Yay. Good girl. Good. So I don't want. Good girl. Super. Nice. So I just start feeding. Oh, here it is. Good, nice one. Good girl. There we go. Good. Good girl. I'm after all the flowers and metal spoon just because she's finally at the floor of her mouth. Let's go back to hand. Good girl, pup. Oh, yeah, we've done that. Yay, that was dramatic. So I've just lost half the pencil again. There we go. Good girl. That is super puppy. Good. So all I want her to do is to stand with her front feet on one and her back feet on another. Good girl, papa. Well done. Let's feed some for food. Super. Good. And at this stage, I'm not picking the, how straight her feet are. It's just building duration for her remaining in that position. So this is working on obviously her core strength and balance. Good girl. Okay. okay. See if she can do it again. Good girl. Nice, good. So see, she found that much quicker that time. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, come over here. That's it. Good. I'm going to have to bought the plan of the spoon. It might be a bit mucky. She normally doesn't have an issue with taking metal spoons from her mouth. It's just again because of her teeth being sore. Yay, good girl. So I'd like her to be able to find it quickly from either side, okay? So it's now what I'm looking for is her to find that her, her position of the stand on the, the two items from either side. So one side, what often happens, okay, I'll show you this side. She finds that much easier, yeah, and quicker than if I lure her to this side. Okay, oh, so let's do that one. So this one she tends to struggle a little bit more with, which is really normal for dogs. They always have a preference, so you want to make sure, good girl, that we wait her out. <laughs> yeah, good baby, well done. That you build up both sides with them to create even uh, and to create them being balanced. So you can see there she's not as uh, comfortable to find that, that sweet spot there. Okay, pop, pop, good, okay. Let's go again, one more. Let's do one more with the hard side, yay. Good puppy, nice, good. Good baby, okay. And this one, much more fluid, good girl, good girl. Good girl, good girl. okay. Get 
So, yeah, introduce him, play again. I drop some tricks to the floor. I don't think she can remember she got one. She might have got one. Hey, cheeky. Let's put a trick to the floor. Just do that again. Yeah. There we go. So, good. Get a little bit of extra choice. Take it. Tell her. So she shouldn't really just take up herself to treats. If there's a toy in the bowl, she be off. Thank you. Good. Let's give her a treat. Do you want that one? Is that hard in your mouth? Good girl. Put that there. Get that up. Good. Super. Good. Thank you. Get it. Good. Okay, another found out is you know to switch between food and toys. You're struggling with your mouth, aren't you? So once the dog understands that, then what I can do is have them. Good girl. Do it by my side. I'm going to do it sitting on the floor just to help the puppy. And I'm going to manipulate her a little bit. Good. Super. Good. And help her. Good. Just so that she's learning to come from different angles. Okay. And we'll go this way. So again, just shuffle along. Yeah, super papa. Well done. Okay. Tiny crumbs of tidbits there. Oh. <laughs> come over here. Oh, oh. This way. That's it. Oh, that's that hard one. We'll go with what she gives me. Is it hot? Let's get back on. Yay, good girl. Lure over this side. Oh, she says I'm not sure now. Yay, good girl. So break it down for her. Yay. Nice, good. Good baby. Nice. That's better. So I'm going to cut some slack on the border, even though she's only got foot three feet on. Okay. And then ask her to come from a different angle. So oh, that's hard. Good. Nice. Because I've changed the orientation. Good girl. That becomes a little bit different for her. Good girl. Nice. Good girl. Good. Okay. And then let's do it this way. Up, up. I'm going to just good. Break it down. Water for stepping on. Good. So again, she's struggling with one side and more than the other. I'm going to just help her a bit more. Good. Feed her for tiny little efforts. Yeah, good girl. That's better. And it's not a speed thing, this. It's just about... I know, it's hard. Yay, good puppy. Well done. That was super. Nice one. Good girl. Good girl. So feeding her in position. Good girl. Good. Nice. Okay. Get it. So let's switch back to the toy. Get that toy! Ha ha ha! Nice one. Good. So just a simple little exercise there to teach you as a precursor to heel working. You'll see um, with Jungle how that moves on. Yeah. So I'm going to just run through very quickly hand touches. Good girl. Yeah. Well done. So hand touches for you can be taught in several ways. I'm going to show you some basic ones with her. Thank you. Good. So if I just oh careful, good girl. Careful. Good girl. So, the obvious way is to um, shape the dog doing multiple taps. Good girl. Breathe on. Yep, yeah. good. And you can vary between feeding away from the hand. Oh, I'm not your mouth short. Get that one. Good girl. Good. Reach. Reach. Yep. And rewarding near the hand. Good girl. Well done. Let's switch food. Let's do that with a toy. So, I can also use a toy to do that. Hey. Ah, really? Oh, that's a hard one. Mm. Yep, good. Nice, good girl. So rewarding near the hand. Good girl. Tug, tug, tug. Ha, ha, ha. Whoa. Whoa. Ha, ha, ha. Whoa. Shh. Okay. Thank you. Well done. Yep, good. So even there, a little bit duration. Good girl. I'm just shaping her to sustain that nose contact on the hand. Good girl. Well done. Up. Thank you. Whoa. Again. I know, it's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How'd you get it? I'm going to wait her out. <laughs> yep, good! Nice, nice. Again, I want them to work out that they have to go to the hand to get the toy, so that's a really good bit of learning for her. Whoa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good girl. Do you want more? Good girl. Thank you. Good. Nice, much more fluid there. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. So another thing that, oh, uh, as a thing, as a uh, puppy thing, because she's sensitive around her mouth, she's been a little bit reluctant to touch the hand, so I have backed off it. Good girl. And again, just being mindful, because if you imagine they've got to hit the hand, she actually has quite a good hand touch, or normally has, 
um, and it's actually weakened um, because of her mouth. I think she's just a bit sensitive around her mouth. So it's one of those things where when you hit developmental stages like that with puppies, it's wise just to back off it and not make a big, a big deal out of it, and you'll probably find that once their mouth sorted, they'll return back to as they were. Thank you. Let's do one more. Easy one. I know. Yep, good. So we went for two there. Yeah, so just building up her hand touch until the dog can repeatedly tap and then prolonging when I click so the dog starts to repeatedly tap the hand and then building a little bit of duration. Good girl, thank you. Well done. So, how do you do? Well done. Good part. So, just simple things there. Stand, four square and a little hand touch. I'm going to show you with Jungle how you progress those things and how they actually follow into your work. If you have any questions, just pop them on the um, chat and I'll have a look at, or on the thread, I should say, and I'll have a look at them. Good girl, let's have a look at questions. Good girl. Yeah. Well okay, so, two questions. One was why was I giving the food with a spoon? Um, it's just because it was raw food and I was being a bit, um, a bit wet and greedy and not wanting to put it on my hand. And as you saw, um, because of her mouth, she got a bit sensitive, so I bought the plan and used um, her get used my hand to feed her raw. Because of the hot weather, I'm just being a little bit um, mandy pandy shall we say. Um, but again, it's a good way to teach your puppy to be comfortable with having metal in their mouth if they don't. She's really good with it, it doesn't bother at all, she'll take food off a spoon. So that's a precursor to when I want to use metal articles and teach her to pick those up. Um, she'll be comfortable with it. Um, the other question was about um, if you have a dog that totally disregards toys when you have food in the equation. So there's several ways in which you can deal with that. One is to make the food exciting and, and pray, um, or to make the food play, uh, the, sorry, make the food a toy itself. So in the Foundation VIP section course, there is a whole section about toy, food motivated dogs and teaching them to play. Um, Sonic, Sugar, um, Scooter, all the dogs that I had to build play via food. There's an extensive section on, on the course Keep working through those and how to strategically build your dog's toy, sorry, food drive onto play. A couple of simple things that you can do is to um, use food that you can actually tug with, so tripe sticks is a good one, or put food in an item, and the simplest thing is putting it in some food in a sock, attach it to a string and use it to engage your dog initially, and then build play from there. Um, as I say, on, my, uh, on the foundation course, um, there's a huge section on, on developing play with food driven dogs. Um, so again, another a real great part of the course um, because that's something that a lot of people struggle with. All right, so I'm going to swap dogs. If there's any more questions, by all means post them and I'll pick them up at, um, later on. Sometimes there's a delay on questions coming through on Facebook. Um, but if you do have them, I will absolutely pick them up. And I'll go and get jungle. Good girl. Your sister in. Okay, so uh, second part of this demo, going through stand, four stand square, <coughs> or standing square, and also hand touches I'm going to do with my man while puppy jungle. Good girl, she's in the crate at the moment. Um, there was a couple of questions um, which I've just picked up. One was, can you do this with a dog that's an older dog? Absolutely. So um, several of my most successful students have been dogs that were several years old, four or five years old, that were domestic dogs that they stumbled along with active obedience and they start them uh, literally, uh, I think Spike might have been three or four years old, he was a little mini schnauzer and he went on to compete um, for the region at Crufts and actually won at his level um, and was a, a phenomenally little trained little dog. Um, another dog that came to me, again from a domestic class, was called Terrier, um, called Amos, and again he was about maybe four, um, and he was retrained, or uh, again trained as a black canvas. So absolutely, it's possible. Um, sometimes it can take a bit longer because obviously your dog may have learned history. If you're retraining a dog, just be patient. Um, the method is very, very systematic in terms of all the pieces. The beauty is that you don't have to do it in any chronological order, so you can mix and match um, when you, which bits that you want and, and which suits your dog. So hopefully this is coming out live. I'm just going to check on my laptop before I get. I'm going to show you with her. With um, I'm going to run through with with um, the Mali puppy how to progress those those bits that we've done. So I'm going to show you the standing square. So she understands that independently without the um, items on the floor. Um, 
But I'm going to just run through those very quickly just to show you. So I'll get her out first. Okay. Engagement first. Good girl. Get it. Ah, good girl. Thank you. Good girl. Okay. That's it. Good girl. Let's get all the objects. Get that one. Get that there. Okay. So she obviously understands what you can see. She can't like doing. Come on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Wait a minute. Cheetah, cheetah, cheetah. Let's just set this up. Two. Stand on those items. Okay. So good girl. Good. So what? In true Malinois fashion. Good. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. Super. So I want her to be able to do that, and then I would progress to having the dog go do it by my side. Okay? And then she can find that position. Okay. Keep time. Good. So, good girl. Moving that on. Once the dog understands that, thank you. Good girl. Um, then I want the dog to be able to find that um, position or that being able to stand square just by me prompting her with my hand. So if I have her come under my hand, yep, good. You can see there she's standing herself up in a balanced manner. Yes, good girl. So her feet are level, yep, good. Well done. And that all stems from this initial understanding. So if I have her in front of me, she understands to a good girl to stand square, as if she's doing a little a pretend show dog stack. Yeah, so she can undo that. When I progress that to, okay, her coming by my side, good, she understands the same principle. She's a little bit crooked there, so I'm gonna reset her. Good girl, good, good, nice, good, good girl. So I'm slightly wonky, so she's slightly wonky mirroring me. Then I wanna be able to move, yep, good. And her remain parallel to me. Okay, so if I do that again, good girl, well done. Let's just do that again. She's underneath the hand, I can move sideways. Good, reading her. Good, I can move, turn on the spot. Good, get it, well done. And she remains in that stand. Oh, good, there you go, pops, good girl. So that all stems from, good girl, her being able to stand in front of me. Good, let's just, good. Yep, good, and move and orientate herself in any direction. Good, so I pivot her around. Come on. Get stuck, she says. Good girl. Come on. This way. And it. Good. Yep, good. In either direction. So that way, she's strong with this side. Good girl. Yep, good. Because it's left movement, which is why I would use the turn. She tends to be, a lot of people's dogs tend to be that way, a stronger one way. So I also want to be able to move sideways and turn, good. turn on the spot. Yep, and her understand to get the tucker to um, remain in that position. Yeah? Good girl. Thank you. Good. Thank you. That was a cheater. Get it? Good. So working on again. Sideline issue, impulse control around the toy. Thanks. Good. Straight. Good. And taking it where I want. Thanks. Good. Good girl. Okay, that'll do. That. Good. Okay. Good girl. So, once my dog understands that, so the dog understands to be, come on, she wants to gravitate into my leg, good. Then I want to test it by moving around, like so, yeah, and that all stems from what you saw me do with Hottie. Good. So I can move this way, he's just a bit, good girl, nice. Um, <clears throat> let's do that again. If she wants to pull into my leg, that's better. Good, so let's just move around her. Hey, okay. you're not quite there, that's better. Good girl. So often when you start to do heel work training, they start to get very much, re um, find a lot of value in being on the leg, which is where she's at now, good girl. So she's a little bit conflicted, but because she has the foundation of understanding to stand square, it's really, really easy to fix, okay? So, really, really simple skill and how it builds into heel work training. And again, for any sports dog, it's a really, really good thing to teach. Second skill that we discussed was hand touches. And I, <coughs> I showed you with, um, with Hottie, how to teach that with multiple taps. With Jungle, the other version is to use a food law. So I, how I train this is to have a treat tucked into my, <coughs> good girl, tucked in between my thumb and my finger. Um, and I'm using a tiny bit of sausage here, so I've cut our sausage. 
And what I do is I tuck it up so the dog can't reach that hand, uh, the treat, sorry, I should say. Okay. And as they go to sniff it, yep. I initially flick and drop the treat, okay? So I'll show you that again. So she touches the hand, yep. good, and I drop the treat. I can either drop it and feed it to her mouth or drop it on the floor, whichever doesn't really matter. Once the dog understands that, okay, then what I do is I wait for a moment of stillness, okay? She's she's does the treat, which is normal. I'll wait a bit longer. Yep, good. So she's just stopped licking there. That's the trade-off of that approach to training the hand touches that it initially can create a lot of frantic licking, okay? Um, again, it's not a problem that's very easy to shake out of the dog. I'll show you how to do that. Let's pop your way get some more treats. Hip hop, skip One second. Okay. So let's do that again. Good girl. Pop. So, again, treat in my hand, tucked in my hand, and I wait for it to stop licking. Yep, good. Well done. And at first, it's anything bar her frantically licking for the food. Good. And then what I do is I start to vary from not always feeding from the left hand. Okay, so yep, good. Now the licking is getting less intense. It's now going to nose tapping. Okay, so wait a bit longer. Yep, good. Nice. Okay, now it's an empty hand. Pop. Yep, good. And I tap and I just to get the ball rolling. So I would do that. I hold my treat in my hand, good girl, for a very few repetitions just to get the dog offering the behaviour of touching my hand. Once the dog understands it, I would move it on. Yep, good. To clicking and rewarding off the hand. With that method, you want to get the dog away from the hand so that they don't start to frantically lick it. Okay? Good. Yep, good. Nice. Okay? And now because she's now she understands to touch the hand to get the reinforcement, I can start to bring my food back into that left hand. Yep. Good. Nice. Waiting. Oh, you're right. Good job. Yep. Good. Super. From my left hand. Let's go again. Yep. Good. Nice. Good girl. Let's do this one here, pops. Good. Yeah, and with that, the other advantage of that method is you can actually move them relatively quickly, so I'll show you with her. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and I'm starting to build up my duration hand touch really, really quickly. So there's pros and cons. The flip side of um, this approach to when you use a lure is that you need to be really, really good with your timing about clicking the dog when the dog is not left licking. The downside of teaching the Morse code is that you just need to be persistent and shape the dog for more intervals. Um, both of those methods will work really effectively um, if you're aware of the, the criteria that you're aiming for. Okay, so again. Yep, good girl. Super. I can use the toy now to reward her. Good, this one. Yep, good. Good, good. nice one. Thank you. Good girl. So now I'm switching back to the toy as a reinforcer. Rather than the food. Thank you. Good. And we go more. Oh, you're right. You're right, come here. Right in. Good. Yep. Good. Nice. So now I'm building up a little bit of duration of the hand touch. Thank you. Good girl. So once the dog understands that, I can then bring that into heel up position, or I can combine it with my standing square. So I can have the dog in the stand. Good girl. Yep, good. And initially it's just a very quick response. Good girl. Yep, good, super. So she's underneath the hand. Good girl, let's stop her again. Okay, good. Yep, good. Nice. So as soon as she makes contact, I reward. That's a precursor to my dog being able to do it by my side. <laughs> good girl. Good. Yep, good. What she wants to do is really drop on her back end, so I'm trying to be proactive and not overly create her dragging her back end, which is something that I probably wouldn't want to have created with her because she would overdo that. Um, so I'm very cautious about her not uh, yep, good, overdoing her drop into her back end. Yeah, so again, that comes in with my stand square. I could help her by popping her on the two items, good girl, um, on the two cushions. 
to have her stand square um, and then introduce my hand touch, which is what I've been playing around with, to be fair to the dog. It, um, and good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Um, which is what I've been playing around with to ensure that she doesn't develop that as a side issue of heel work training. Yeah, good girl. Let me pass. Let's just do that one more little play one. Oh, okay, let's do a hard one. No, no, just another hard one. Me. Good. Some hand touch. Good. Good girl. Super. Good. So start to build that little bit of duration and start to encourage her nice movement. Good. Thank you. Ready to move. Next one. Good. Good girl. Well done. She came off the hand there, so I'm going to start again. Good. Good girl, super, good, good. Hey, pop, hey, pop, hey, hey, pop, hey, pop, hey, pop, hey, pop, thank you. Good girl. Well done. Get it. <laughs> thank you. Get it. Good. Well done, that's it. Well done. Good girl. Pop your way. Good girl. See you later. Good girl. Good. So, just some simple exercises and how they build up over. Um, time, so from initially with Hottie teaching her to stand square on the two items, how that then evolves to the dog standing by my side and also um, standing as a precursor to moving forward, um, and also my hand touch, the two methods of which I would choose to train it. One would be shaping the dog, tapping my hand repeatedly, or the lower method and how to fade the lure very quickly out of the equation. Um, so just some simple things there which will benefit irrespective of the sport that you teach. If, if you teach a dog to do jumping, you want them to understand how to be balanced and square, and it's a great way to condition them to be strong. Hand touches are great for contacts, for article indication, for heel work training, for manoeuvring them in position. Um, and grab one of these and sit down on. Um, joining the groups and um, getting on board with um, training with me. And because of that, and because of the current climate, what I have um, and my team have done is for this year only, okay, so for 2020, because of the COVID virus that's, and the, the uncertainty that people are experiencing, you can join either course, either the, uh, the heel work course or the foundation course, and you will get a year's free access to my VIP groups. So those are two exclusive um, Facebook groups where you can post content and get direct feedback from me. You can participate in live sessions similar to what you've just seen, and also Q&As and instigate how the, the course goes. So what will often happen is a student will post a request of, can you cover how to teach this element, or I'm having this problem, and I will like, elaborate on that via a live, and I'll do a live session with them. So for 2020, both of those groups will be a free bonus when you join. So join, um, so access is going to be, or joining is going to be for this week. I'm going to be um, doing several lives and several um, sessions this week to give you guys more stuff like this and give you a taste of what you can get in the VIP groups. If you want to join the VIP groups, just go to my website, kamalfernandesonlinetraining.com or kamalfernandes.co.uk. Um, join the group and you will receive a follow-up email which will then prompt you to join the VIP groups. I know a lot of people have been messaging me privately on Instagram and Facebook, etc., and emailing me about how to get involved. And as I say, for 2020, normally the course would be you'd, you would be able to purchase the course, either course, the VIP, sorry, the Hill Work course or the Foundation course as individual entities, and the VIP course would be a bonus, uh, something else that you'd have to subscribe to. For this year, for 2020, in order to try and help people, the access to the VIP course uh, groups. Uh, for both foundation and heel work are going to be added bonuses when you subscribe for either course. All right? If you want to join both, I've got lots of students that do the foundation course and the heel work course, and are both VIP members of both. Uh, absolutely great. Um, we'd love to have you there. It's an amazing community of people from all walks of uh, life and all different sports. IGP, top international level competitors at IGP, heel works in music, obedience, working trials, a real eclectic mix of people across the globe, incredibly supportive network of people. So but we would love to have you join. So as I say, for the rest of this week, the offer will be open. Um, just go to my website, have a look, click on the, uh, the, um, uh, the links to join the site. If you have any problems, just message me and I will give you some guidance about joining and being part of that. And as I say, as a, for this year, you'll be able to join my VIP groups. 
So from me, from the dogs, hopefully, if there's any questions, I'm going to have a quick look before I sign off, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the amazing weather. So I have a question about toys. Do my dogs have access to toys outside the training? Yes, absolutely. Um, scattered around my garden looks like a, a toy graveyard between that and bones. Yeah, my dogs absolutely have toys. But the irony is, I tend to keep the toys, like, for example, that toy there, I keep for in, uh, interaction with uh, when I'm training. And I have toys that are more expressly used for training, um, and they have toys like um, random toys out in the garden. They do have some tub toys out there, which, in truth, my dogs, and I think somebody asked this when I did my lives about the Jungle Book, my dogs generally don't play with toys away from me. Um, you very rarely see them playing with a toy, but as much as it doesn't bother me at all and I don't deter it or curb it, they just prefer the interaction with me, which is a byproduct of the way in which they're raised. So anybody on the Jungle Book will see how much input I put in, how much work I put into creating that, that relationship with my dogs. Um, so the Jungle Book is you know, 12 months access to the life of both Jungle and Hottie. And you'll see how much work I put to create them being in tune with me and how much effort I put to create them being um, very uh, much my dogs as opposed to and wanting to engage with me versus other toys independently of me. Um, and as a result of that, they tend not to play with toys um, on their own. And as I say, I don't deter it. They, I love to see them in the garden chewing bones and you know, I'd love to see them playing with the toy, but they very, very rarely play with toys. They would obviously choose a, choose a bone away from me, but they would very, very, very rarely ever, if ever, play with the toy if I wasn't involved because they want that interaction with me. All right? So hopefully that's answered your question. I'm going to just check if there's any more. Let's have a look at my laptop. Okay, another question is, do you have a preference for the cushions you use and the ones you use today? Which make are they, please? So these ones are fit bones. Um, from, uh, these are fit bones from Fitbones, I believe. I got those from Kamdar, Kamdar, I can never pronounce it. Um, in, uh, Kamdar K9, um, based in the UK. But um, I believe, depending on where you are, Susan, you can um, get those um, from a lot of different places. Um, I will post the link for where I got these from. However, I like to use these because um, there's a lot I can do with it. They're quite hard wearing. I'm really into conditioning my dog, so um, I like all the, the stuff that you can get with it. To, to do that, sorry. However, if you don't have these items or you can't afford to buy these items or for, you know, for whatever reason, you can use items around your home. So use a cushion off your sofa or chair. You can use, um, you know, there's, I have a, a step which I got from, uh, I think it was one of the supermarket. It was one of the little, like nothing. I think it was about tenner. Um, if not, you can use um, planks of wood or um, bricks. There's loads of things that you can use to recreate these, the same principle um, that of um, your dog being on two independent items. To create more instability, obviously you could put a cushion, for example, if you had um, a, a plank of wood and you put a cushion on top of it, it would create a little bit of instability, which is going to promote the dog to use its body and um, its core strength. Yeah? Oh, thank you, Melita. So Melita's one of the people on the... Um, VIP groups, and she said how great it is, she said how awesome it is, so that was really nice for her to hear. So is there any final questions? If not, I shall leave, love you and leave you, and leave you to enjoy the rest of today. As I said, I'm going to be doing a couple more of these this week. If you do want to join, just go to my um, website, follow the links, you'll be able to sign up, and as I say, you'll get a follow-up email with um, giving you access to the VIP groups. But for me, from the dogs, unless there's any final questions... I shall love you and leave you and enjoy the rest of your day, guys.